Hello, welcome once again. Uh, we were talking about last time about powertrain control modules. The actual module is this part of it over here. The outside, the external of it is the external to it is the sensors. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to address. First of all, when you lose communications and you believe you have a PCM problem or ECU problem, you go to the fuse and you the fuse is blown. Obviously, you lose the module itself. Now, getting to the module over here, and I, there's a better pictorial in the, in the textbook. The textbook can explain better than I can. So, in this pictorial or layout, uh, you call it, you see this is the processor, a microprocessor or oh, microcomputer they call it like it's called actually the cpu central processing unit so the chip if you look at printed circuit board that i showed you one time there are many many integrated circuits ic's called the main one the microprocessor was on this one over here on all these pads in this place over here obviously it's taken out you can see how many pins it has that microprocessor could be an intel could be any a xilog in the olden days that we used to have so anyway microprocessor is the is the brain of the gang it is part of the pcm part of the body control module all these modules and in it you have memory so when you lose that fuse that i just showed you so let's we have 12 volts but we have a fuse going to a fuse the other side should be 12 volts right but it's blown this fuse f1 is blown therefore the other side is zero volts right <clears throat> it goes to this to the whole thing actually and it goes to the processor now <clears throat> how much volts do you think the microprocessor needs <clears throat> Remember, we lost the 12 volts. We don't have any communications. Car doesn't start. That's the problem that the car doesn't start. 12 volts, the microprocessor, the one I just showed you on the printed circuit board, does not get 12 volts. That is too high of a voltage, as I showed you. Now, many processors or ICs used to get 5 volts, but even 5 volts was too high. Then it went down to 3.3 so it went to 5 volts to 3.3 volts and now it decreases even less than that so you're talking about a little voltage over here minute voltage going to these processors the microprocessor that we saw over here therefore the reason being we want the voltage to be as low as possible that means it will dissipate the least amount of power that means also the least amount of heat now remember in these processors there are billions of transistors not even millions transistors in the billions in the billions in i in uh like the pentel like we just said in uh, in uh, your computer so therefore they need a fan on it so let's say pin one over here Let's say this is pin one. Pin one, and you start going this way, and you count. So let's say pin one over here gets the 3.3 volts, or 1.8 volts, whatever, right? <clears throat> From the 12 volts. This processor gets hot. Those, all those transistors turn on and off, on and off, get hot. You need a fan. If you go to your computer, you will find a fan. That fan will get... 12 volts but the processor like we said cannot handle 12 volts we don't want it to have 12 volts we want the voltage to get as low as possible so it can dissipate the least amount of heat for those transistors <clears throat> that's the problem when you lose 12 volts you lose the processor that's the main point okay now going back to the other one getting back to this to the textbook the drawing the layout I specified inputs and outputs. Oxygen sensors are inputs. 
outputs are injectors, the fuel injectors. How did I know? And I said that I learned from the textbook. <clears throat> if you go to the textbook again, the pictorial, see the oxygen sensor? See the throttle position sensor. Look at the arrow. The arrow is going in. That means what? It is an input. So an analog and digital. Analog means like a sine wave. One volt, two volts, three volts. It's converted to digital. One or zero. This is one or zero. That's what digital is. Not too important. The main point is this gets a digital signal. Okay? <clears throat> but the point is oxygen sensors. These are sensors are inputs. That's how I knew. I just told you also fuel injectors are outputs. How did I know that? From learning from the textbook again. Where does this go? These are uh, transistors, but I don't want to delve too much on that. What's the output? Fuel injection system. That means it goes to the fuel injectors to turn the fuel injectors on or off. At the request of the oxygen sensors, <clears throat> let's say this will be whatever, 0.4 volts, 0.4 volts, oops, 0.4 volts, 0.2 volts, whatever. This is one volt. It has parameters and instructions. A microprocessor, remember, can handle a million of instructions in a second or a millisecond. Those programs are written into them by the programmers. So the microprocessor looks at the program, at the instructions. It gets all the data, in this case being the voltages, from these two sensors. It reacts to it by the instructions that tells it what to do. Those instructions will tell what the transistors or the fuel injectors to allow more fuel or less fuel in order to have the proper air to fuel ratio. This is the basics of a PCM board, a body control module, transmission control module, lighting control module. There's always a processor that does the calculations. Based on those calculations, those inputs from all the sensors, not just these two, but these, are, these are just examples, it will react. It will turn either a fuel pump on or off, a starter motor on and on by giving a ground, an actuator, a solenoid in a transmission. It will react in that manner to turn something on or off. That thing that turns on and off or is being turned on and off is the output. That's how I told you before. The textbook gives you the foundation and it teaches you <clears throat> what goes on in the PCM board. Without looking at this or understanding from this, I would really not understand how the PCM board, <clears throat> which is this part of it, is related to these sensors and to this. I would not know that this is an output or an input. I would not know that these sensors are an input and output until I understood that pictorial in the layout from this textbook, which made things much clearer, <clears throat> okay? So now when you see a coolant temperature sensor going to pin two or whatever, right? You know it is an input because it is a sensor. Where do we know it from? <clears throat> Where do we know it from? From this layout. Anything Anything giving information is analog, going to digital, and it goes to right here, the microprocessor. Puts it in memory, holds it in memory until it is needed again. It, it, then it receives it, retrieves it from memory because it can, hold, it can only hold so much information. If you want to do 2 plus 2 equal 4, it'll take 2, put it in memory, right? Then the other decimal plus 2... It'll bring out the, the two from the memory that it put in there. It will add it from the instructions in a program that are written. And that's how you get number four. Two plus two equals four. So it's, it's, we don't have to worry about these things, obviously. But this very much gave me the foundation to understand any module. When I made that video to you, I think some comments where they didn't understand where I'm coming from. Um, stressing the points about PCMs and all that. This is where I, 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 it came from. So when you look at this schematic, when you look at this schematic that we used, the PCM board over here, 
So there could be a microprocessor in here. There could be multi multi microprocessors in here. But what do we say? A cam positions a sensor signal is an input. Again, the same theory as this. Anything of a sensor will go to the microprocessor after it is digitized, digital, ones and zeros. So I hope this was um, informative. Like I said, the processors, the ICs are all digital. They work on digital. Okay? And like I said before, when you open up the PCM, of course, we don't have to worry about it because we don't, we're not going to do component troubling uh, troubleshooting to PCMs, it's not um, cost effective like it was years ago, like I used to do it. It's much cheaper to get a new one, just like a, a phone, a cell phone, or anything like that. It's much cheaper. So, the processor itself, like I told you, has many pins. Those many pins would, from vibration, would come off these pads. These are pads, and these are the traces from the pad to wherever it has to go to make the connection. So from here, this is a pad. Here's the connection going here to this point. And this point goes on the bottom of this board. So if this is a PCM board, you would have on the bottom, you would have more traces from that. These traces, for example, this trace goes from this point to this point over here. But... Like I said before, there are multi-layers in here. You see how thick this is? This can have eight or nine layers in between, like a sandwich. You will not see it, and you will not understand it. But there are many layers, one for 5 volts, one for 3.3 .3 volts, one for the ground plane, like we said. Therefore, when you look at a connector, and this is a connector, let's say we connect the connector to this PCM board. These points over here, these points over here are obviously the leads that come up from this connector. They will go to certain points over here. Notice over here you don't have traces. See, no traces. You don't see these lines going to these. You don't see it. See, over here you have a trace. Over here you have a trace. Where are the rest of them? Where are the rest of the traces? Guess what? They are in between. In between these layers are where the other traces go that you cannot see. It's almost like you need an x-ray machine to look inside the other layers to find where the other ones are going. That's how complex these things are and what I had to deal with. So... Like I said, I hope this gave you a better understanding. Like we, we're gonna go, we're gonna work on it under the hood, under the car. You're gonna see the PCM, and you're gonna be more familiar now. I hope with finding the pins, identifying the pins, and knowing what's an input, what's an output. What do I do? I have no communications. I just put on my code reader to the DLC, to the connector under the dashboard and it told me no community what do i do first i find the fuse that goes to it in this picture over here there are no fuses so you know this is not the b plus line this has to do with the sensors that go to it okay there's another page to it that's what you do first like i showed you in the example all right i hope this was informative please go to my channel Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto and my other one that just got monetized Automotive Electronic Schematics by Joseph where you'll see some hands-on uh, videos that hopefully using a, a clamp meter you'll understand a little better thanks for watching